Surface area of a composite solid, lesson 9.4b. If you haven't seen 9.4a, you need to see that first, and there's a link in the description. The surface area, S, of a solid figure is the sum of the area of all of its faces or surfaces. A net is an unfolded three-dimensional figure. We can use it to find total surface area. So this is the net of a rectangular prism. If we fold it on the dotted lines and tape it together, we can actually make a rectangular prism. But when we look at this, we can see all the rectangles to find surface area. A composite solid is made of two or more solid figures. To find the total surface area, we need to find the area of each figure and then add them together. So we would find the surface area of this big bottom box and then this top piece that kind of looks like a stick of butter. We would add them together. And for missing parts, we find the total area and subtract that part. So underneath this long skinny box is a surface area that's not showing. And if we found the total surface area for this long skinny stick of butter looking one, we can't count what's underneath it. So it's almost like it would only have one base instead of a top and a bottom. It would only have the top, see? What's in between these two shapes is not a surface area. It's not on the surface. Now, you can watch Grade 7 Math 9.3c, and there'll be a link to that one too, and that will go into it more. So here we have a birdhouse. We have the dimensions written in centimeters. Tala built a birdhouse. What was the surface area before the hole was drilled? So there's a little hole she drilled for the birds to get inside. But before she drilled the hole, what was the surface area of this birdhouse? When we look at all the measurements, we can see there's a height of 18 centimeters. Here is 24 centimeters. It's 30 centimeters wide, which also means that's 30 centimeters, doesn't it? If that's 30 centimeters, then this line is 30 centimeters. Mm -hmm. This part of the roof is 17. That means that part of the roof is 17, doesn't it? We identify all the shapes. There's a rectangular prism, and there's a triangular prism. And the rectangular prism is 18 centimeters this way, 24 this way, and 30 this way. And it's got a base down inside the bottom and four lateral sides, one, two, three, four. We can see all the measures, and technically, we could take each one separately and do the area of this and do 18 times 30, do the area of this one, do 18 times 24, the area of this one, 18 times 30, the area of this one, 18 times 24. We know this is 30 across, and this is 24 down, and there's one base. We do 30 times 24, and we can add all of those up together. That would take a while. There's a much quicker way. We can just find the area of a rectangular solid. For the roof, it's actually a triangular prism, and if we picked it up and turned it on its side so that it's sitting on one of the triangles as a base, then its height would be 24. We could find the area of a triangular prism. Now, it's just basically two triangles and two rectangles, isn't it? We could find each area separately, but it's a lot quicker to just find the area of a triangular prism. Now, because the birdhouse is hollow, the birds have to get inside, don't they? So it's empty inside, there's no roof, when it's just the rectangular prism, and the roof has no bottom. See? Because it's hollow inside. So because the birdhouse is hollow, the rectangular prism has no top and the triangular prism roof has no bottom. So one face of each prism is going to be missing. Okay? So keep that in mind. We find the surface area of each prism, then we add the areas together. Last, we subtract the areas of the missing parts that are not on the surface. That top to the rectangular one and the bottom to the triangular one. So for the rectangular prism, we're going to use pH plus 2B. That's perimeter 
times height plus 2 times the base. And the perimeter is 24 centimeters plus 24 plus 30 plus 30. If this side's 24, then this side's 24. So we have 24 plus 24 and 30, and then there's 30 in the back, isn't there? So we have a 24, a 24, a 30, and a 30, okay? We add those together, that's 48 plus 60, we get 108. Now height, we know, is 18. We do perimeter times height, and we get 1,944 centimeters squared. Now, remember, we're going to use pH plus 2B, okay? So we got the pH part, that's the 1944. Now, the base area, that's length times width. So we're going to do 24 times 30. 24 times 30, okay? That'll give us the area of the base as 720 centimeters squared. Now, we do pH plus 2B, we add the 1944 plus the 1440, and we get 3,384 centimeters squared, okay? And we set that aside. Now we're going to work on the triangular prism. We're going to use pH plus 2B. The perimeter is 17 plus 17 plus 30. Let's look. We've got a 17 and another 17 and a 30, okay? If you look at this, it's 17 plus 17 plus that 30, okay? That's going to give us a 64. The height, because we're now standing it on one of the triangles, that makes the height 24, see? When we do the perimeter times the height, we're going to get 64 times 24. That's going to give us 1,536 centimeters squared. Now we need to do the base area for these triangles, okay? Because these are the bases now, because we turn it on its side, and that's half base height, isn't it, the formula? So we're going to do half times 30 times 8, because that little height right here was 8, wasn't it? Let's take a look. It says it's 8, okay? So we're going to do half of the 30 times 8. That's going to give us half times 240. That's what that is, right? And half of 240 is 120. So now we have 120 centimeters squared. We have to add the 2B. Well, the two bases together would be 2 times 120. That would be 240 centimeters squared. We add the triangular prism surfaces the 1536 and the 240 together, and we get 1,776 centimeters squared. Now we can add the total from the rectangular prism and the total from the triangular prism together, and we get 5,160. But we need to subtract those two faces that didn't show on the surface of the birdhouse. We need to subtract the surface that was at the top of the rectangular prism and the bottom of the triangular prism, okay? And they were both 720, 720, so we're going to be subtracting 1,440 centimeters squared from this 5,160. It's going to give us a total of 3,720 centimeters squared surface area for this birdhouse, okay? Now, I know this can be confusing. You can always push the little thing back and re-watch that section of the video, okay? And maybe it'll make more sense, all right? So remember that a net is an unfolded 3D shape, and we can see the sides and the base and the base, okay? So here are the keys to what the formulas mean. A is area, B is base, H is height, S is side, L is length, W is width. When you see a B with a little tiny one down here, that's called a subscript. That's B sub one for subscript one. So that would be the first base. And then B sub two would be the second base. R is radius. Pi 
that's 3.14 approximately, because we can't use all the digits of pi, right? As a fraction, we use approximately 22 sevenths, okay? So you can use these formulas, see the formulas I have up here? To help you find surface area, okay? And let's try another one. This could be a cake, right? Or it could be a couple of wooden blocks. We're going to use that pH plus 2B for two rectangular prisms. So we have a large rectangular prism and a small rectangular prism, and we can see they're in inches. The perimeter of the large one is a 6, so there's a 6 hiding on this side, isn't there? A 5 in the front, and there's a 5 in the back, isn't there? We add those together, we get 22. The height is 3 inches. P times H, 22 times 3 is 66. Now we need to do the base. We just do length times width for the rectangle, right? 6 times 5, that's 30. But we need two of them because it's got a top and a bottom, right? Base 1, base, base sub 1, base sub 2, okay? So that gives us a 60 for two of them. We add the pH plus the 2B, and we get 126 inches squared for the rectangular, the large rectangular prism, okay? For the small one, we've got 4 inches, 3 inches, and a height of 2 inches. And the perimeter is 4 inches on this side, 4 inches hiding on that side, 3 inches up in the front here, and 3 inches hiding in the back. 4 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3 is 14. The height is 2. And perimeter times height, 14 times 2, is 28. The base is going to be the 4 inches times 3 inches, length times width, isn't it? That's going to give us a 12. So we need to do the pH plus 2B. We need 2B, don't we? 2 times 12 is 24. We add the 28 from the pH and the 24 from the 2B together, and we get 52 inches squared. We add the 126 from the large one to the 52 from the small one, and we get 178 inches squared. But we're not done because there is an area underneath this small prism that is not surface area. It's not showing on the surface, and it's 4 inches by 3 inches. And on the top of the large prism is a 4 inch by 3 inch area that we need to subtract. So the large one was 126, the small one was 52, it totaled 178 inches squared. We need to subtract the area in between the prisms that aren't showing on the surface. So this little dotted area is not showing, and if we lifted this little one up and looked underneath it like that, okay? So imagine we've got like, like this cube, we've got an empty area here that I can put my thumb in, see that? So we're not going to count that for the prism, okay, for the surface area. We need to take that away. It's not on the surface, it's not showing. So we've got a 4 times 3 and a 4 times 3, so we have 2 times 4 times 3. We had 178 square inches, we need to take these empty areas away. That means we're going to take away 24 and that's going to give us 154 inches squared when we subtract those two areas that are not really part of the surface. See? Does that make sense? I hope. All right. I'm going to go back over here so you can take a look at this one again. Get a good look at how we did this. We did each prism separately, and then at the end we subtracted the parts that were missing. Now, technically, we knew that its top was missing, so we could have just said, instead of doing two base, we could have just used 720, and then taken that away from that rectangular prism right away, see? We also could have done it for this one and taken the 720 away, but it's a lot easier when you're dealing with a lot of surface areas. It's a lot easier to just find the surface area of the whole prism and then just subtract what was missing, okay? 
It's also a lot easier than finding each separate little area for each part of the net, isn't it? Our next video is 9.4c, and I'm going to show you how removing a cube increases surface area. If you popped out a cube from a big pile of cubes, in this case, it wouldn't affect the surface area because there's still three surfaces here. But what if I pulled one out from like right there? I'll show you what happens, okay? I hope you're doing well, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.